On the evening of February 24, 1986, 29-year-old nurse Sherry Rasmussen was found by her husband lying dead on the living room floor. Her face was severely beaten and disfigured to the point that she was unrecognizable, and the injuries were consistent with being hit with a muzzle and butt plate of a gun. She also had three gunshot wounds to the chest that were disclosed as the official cause of death, with the medical examiner asserting that any one of the three bullets could have killed her. Perhaps the most disturbing discovery during the autopsy was that most of Sherry's injuries were inflicted upon her after she was killed, which was concluded due to the lack of hemorrhaging and inflammation of the injuries. This included most of the victim's facial injuries and even a bite mark on her left forearm. Even after Sherry had taken her last breath, the assailant was still inflicting an inconceivable amount of damage to her body. She was buried in a closed casket seven days later. The homicide detectives assigned to the case immediately associated Sherry's murder with multiple break-ins that had occurred that same night on the same street. Another woman had even been assaulted and was able to give a description of two assailants, and this description became the sole focus of the investigation into Sherry's murder. The prime suspects were now two middle-aged Latino males of medium height and build. They were never found, and the case went unsolved for 23 years. By 2009, crime in Los Angeles had declined enough from its earlier levels that detectives began looking into cold cases to increase their clearance rates, which is when the Rasmussen files resurfaced. It stood out from the rest as new methods of genetic analysis discovered that the DNA found at the crime scene pointed to a single female suspect. The two previous male suspects were then invalidated along with the original theory of a burglary gone wrong. The investigation into Sherry Rasmussen's murder was then reopened, and the newly appointed criminal investigators started from scratch. It was soon discovered that a statement given by Sherry's father, of whom he thought to be the prime suspect, was quickly brushed to one side, as the person in question was a serving LAPD cop from the exact department who were investigating the case. The person in question was a woman by the name of Stephanie Lazarus. She was a 25-year-old police officer at the time, who had been with the force for two years. She had dated Sherry's husband, John Rutten, in an on-and-off relationship throughout college and for a short time after. It was even discovered that John had slept with Lazarus after he became engaged, and the two even dated for a while after Sherry's murder. She was now a 25-year veteran of the police force, and had worked her way up to a senior detective of the Commercial Crimes Division. She was essentially in charge of all art-related investigations in the city of Los Angeles. The investigators went with a gut feeling and decided to make Lazarus the prime suspect, with the collection of her DNA being the very first task. Attaining it through a warrant would have let Lazarus know she was under investigation, so it had to be discreetly collected instead. Within 24 hours of becoming the prime suspect, a coffee cup she discarded while off duty was received by police. A DNA sample was then taken, and it came up as an exact match to the DNA found on Sherry Rasmussen's bite mark. There is a stigma around police interrogation tactics being secretive, and how knowing this information can somehow help the guilty in deceiving their way to freedom. Yet these tactics have been public knowledge since their inception in the 1940s, and the following interrogation is a legitimate testimony into how watching an interrogation is a world apart from being subjected to one. You can know every technique in the book, and each specific strategy and subtle scenario that goes along with it, but ultimately, you have no idea how you're going to react to a specific situation until you you're actually in it. With that being said, knowing these tactics can still give an individual some form of advantage with regards to awareness. The investigators knew that their initial confrontation with Lazarus could in no way resemble a traditional interrogation, nor be officially classified as one, and there were two reasons for this. The first was that Stephanie would be wise to the fact that her best option would be to request legal counsel right away and end the procedure immediately. The second was that Stephanie was not about to be read her Miranda rights before being asked questions related to the investigation. A defense team could easily make anything she divulges inadmissible in court. Yet this was classed as a simple discussion between two parties, and the footage that was captured on a hidden camera was able to be submitted as evidence under surveillance footage rather than interrogation footage. The detectives created a ruse, inviting Stephanie to come in and advise them on a case involving stolen art. Knowing they were dealing with one of their own, they rehearsed and prepared for the interview more than anything they had done before. Their plan of attack was to keep the conversation as casual as possible for as long as possible, and carefully waited for the key moments to initiate the confrontation. Stephanie, I don't know if you know my partner. Hey, oh, great. Hi. Hi. Sarah, that's yeah, you guys. How's it going? Good. Yes. No, no, no. Uh, well, have a seat. Hi. 
I don't want to talk about this in the squadron because well, I, okay. I don't know who people are listening. That's true. That's and if we go to my side, everybody's yeah. always wondering what everybody oh, else yes, is doing. No okay. The first thing the detectives do is set up a compatible tone with a suspect. She has just stepped foot inside an interrogation room, and the detectives negate the negative implications of such an environment through a friendly disposition. Consultative meetings, such as seeking advice over an art theft, can take place anywhere, and the last place detectives would choose to spend more time in would be an interrogation room. The reason they give the suspect for meeting in such an unusual location is to not spread rumors or innuendo, yet the real reason is that all firearms have to be checked in before entering the area, and they needed the suspect to give up her gun without alerting suspicion. But, uh, like we're talking about being busy and stuff, we've been assigned a case that we've been looking at. Okay. okay. It's a new case, and as we're doing the case, there's some notes uh, to see that as far as your name being mentioned. Do oh, you, okay. Do you know John Rutten? Try and imagine for one moment that you savagely murdered a love rival in a jealous rage. Over two decades had passed since the act, then all of a sudden you're brought to an interrogation room and sat directly opposite two senior investigators who bring up the name of the man you committed first degree homicide for. John Rutten? John Rutten? Rutten. The investigators already knew how to say John Rutten's name correctly. The mispronunciation was a simple strategy to see how the suspect would react. Setting aside the element of the murder, John Rutten was the second longest relationship in Stephanie's life, and a psychiatrist later stated that this pause was four times as long as it should have been. She was already being deceptive by acting as if she hadn't thought about that name for so long, giving reason for her prolonged reflection, when in reality, the name John Rutten was engraved in her memory, and even when slightly mispronounced, it would have most likely taken milliseconds for her to realize exactly who the detectives were referring to. Right. Oh yeah, I went to school with him. You did? Yeah. How long did you know him? Gosh, well, I went to school in, um, let's see, went to UCLA in 1978 I started and, um, you know, met him at school at the dorms. Mm -hmm. um, she says she met him in the dorms, yet left out the fact that they had dated for four years and went on numerous holidays together. Even though she wasn't asked directly, a truthful subject would most often volunteer this information without having to be pressed for it. Were you guys friends, close friends? Yeah, we're very close friends. I mean, yeah. I mean what's this all about? Well, it's regarding, it's a case we're working on and it involves John and in there, some of the statements we, we reviewed, uh, you know, there's notes and stuff that he, that he knew you and stuff. Oh yeah, I mean, we, Good friends, um, lived in the dorms for, I lived in the dorms for two years. Um, you guys lived in the same dorm? Yeah. Or, oh, okay. Yeah, Dijkstra. Okay. Were you guys just friends or anything else or? Yeah, we were, we were good friends. Yeah. Was there ever any relationship or anything that developed between you guys? Yeah, I mean, we dated, uh, uh -huh. you know, um, I mean, is it, what's this all about? Well, it's relating to, uh, his wife. It's unfortunate that Stephanie's face wasn't captured at this moment, because she would have no doubt been immediately struck by the psychological reaction known as fight or flight. Her brain would have just triggered the influx of a specific cocktail of hormones in order to prepare her to either stay and deal with the threat, or try and run away to safety. Stephanie chooses to fight. Okay. Okay. Did you know her? Not really. I mean, I knew that he got married years ago. Uh-huh. Did you ever meet her? God, I don't know. Um, Do you know who she was or anything? Well, I... Let me think. God, it's been a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I may have met her. Um, geez. The words, gosh, God, gee, are exclamatory remarks used to express surprise or strong emotion. You will see them used continuously throughout this interrogation, which is the suspect trying to insinuate a vague memory due to a lack of contemplation on the subject matter. She's trying to emit the impression that she would have had no reason to give any further thought to John, or anything related to John, since they stopped seeing each other over two decades ago. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, let me see. Let me ask you. You said you, you dated John. How long did you guys date? I mean, well, are you guys? Is this something? 
As we know, Stephanie is a cop and has been for 25 years. She will be wise to the fact that acting oblivious to the unusual development of the situation will be a glaring red flag in the eyes of the investigators. It's been shown time and again on this channel. Guilty suspects will often try and act naive to a blatant confrontation as a means to avoiding it altogether, whereas truthful subjects will address the confrontation and either refute it or, if it's subtle, want immediate clarification and transparency as to what was being insinuated. I mean, you said hey, I was going to interview somebody about art and how well, you guys are. Here's, here's <laughs> I mean, Stephanie, here's the situation: is basically, we, you know, we knew that this uh, when we saw this in the in in this chrono that maybe you know there was some relationship there. That's what the chrono seemed to indicate. The detective now subtly avoids the question altogether, but instead offers a deceptively reassuring response to the suspect. He makes a very sharp switch from the investigative subject matter to the previous topic of workplace rumors. He brings her focus back to the false perception of them being on her side. Stephanie had just asked what was going on, and now he essentially replies with, "We are your friends. We're doing you a favor." And we didn't want to come up to you at your desk and ask those kinds of questions or do anything. You know how up there people can see what's going on if you go into an interview room or people are in there getting oh, supplies. And so we, we wanted to afford you some privacy, some confidentiality okay. to talk about this because we thought it might be, you know, something, you know, you're married to someone else, obviously, and so forth, and that you may not want to, you know, talk about these things in that setting where someone, you know, we don't want the rumor mill or gossip or any of that kind of stuff yeah, to I mean, start. that's fine. I mean... So we're, we're, we did this just as, as a means to try and speak to you okay, in just a confidential I mean, just place where you, you know, where, where your business isn't out there for other people in, in well, you know, I mean, your division yeah, and all I mean, about. Whether it be shock or the total reluctance to accept the situation at hand, Stephanie warily accepts the reassuring response without further inquiry into her initial challenge. She instead falls back into her agenda of having a foggy memory with regard to the incriminating contents. You know, God, that's been a million years ago. I mean, you know, um, what year is it now? 2009? I mean, I graduated in 82. 82, mm. yeah. Um, you know, we dated. Um, I dated other guys. I'm sure he dated other girls. Um, mm. Well, let me ask you <laughs> Roughly, how long would you <coughs> would you say you guys dated? Oh, jeez. Um, I couldn't even say. I mean... Notice how she now goes on to over-explain things that don't require an explanation, and weren't even inquired about. It's a clear-cut indication of hyper-arousal and a derivative of TMT, also known as terror management theory. The suspect will go off on unrelated tangents as means for gaining momentary relief. Going into detail about trivial things affords her a brief escape from the terrifying reality eventuating before her. This is a very common occurrence in interrogations where the suspect is facing serious charges, and psychiatry believe it to be a subconscious coping mechanism. I started school there in 78. Mm -hmm. I started UCLA in 1978. Mm -hmm. I graduated in 82. Um, I don't even remember what year he graduated, if it was a year or two before me. Okay. Um, I think he was a little bit older than I was. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I can't remember if he was born, let's say I'm born in 60, 1960. I don't know if he was born in 58 or 59. I mean, I, you know, um, I mean, I knew his parents, I knew his sister. His brother went to Northridge. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, his sister had spent the night at my house before. Obviously, I spent the night at his house before. He probably spent the night at my house before. Um, you know, I, I yeah. yeah, I don't. I, well, correct me if I'm wrong, because from what you're telling me, is you, you guys dated while you were in college together, right? Yeah, and probably after college. Um, I'm, I, I can't. Jeez. Um, trying to think when I met my husband. I met my husband in, when did I meet Scott? Um, let's see, I was teaching Dare, because I met Scott when I was teaching Dare up in Oregon. But we had long stopped, you know, dating before that. So you um, haven't talked to him for a long time? Oh, I, I think I haven't talked to him in a long time. Um, I couldn't even tell you when the last time I talked to him. Um, I met Scott, I'm thinking in... 92 maybe um april of 92 it was scott being your husband yeah i'm trying to think i was teaching dare let's see what year is this, this is, we'll be married i got married in 1996 i think i met scott in 92 prior to that i couldn't tell you how long i had talked you know talked to john prior to that but mm -hmm. since um, you since you met your husband scott you hadn't talked to him i mean he may have called me uh, once or twice uh -huh. before we got married. Right. Um, you know, geez, I, I lived, I moved to see me 
1994 because I lost my house in the earthquake. Oh, really? Um, uh, quite honestly, I probably keep in contact with a few people from the dorms. We we all we all lived on the tenth floor, um, and um, there's about three or four people I keep in contact with. There's probably like six or eight of us that were all really close. Mm-hmm. And who are those um, people? Oh, geez, um, Diana Basta. Um, the people I still keep I I haven't t- been in contact with her in a long time. Mm-hmm. Um I mean what wh- you know what's uh, what's I mean what's this all about? I mean Well let me ask you. That. The suspect challenges the detectives for the second time and once again the question is avoided, but this time in a more confrontational manner as the topic is maintained with no reassurance afforded. The detectives are ramping up the pressure in a very subtle yet highly effective manner. What ended the relationship between you and John? <laughs> You know, I don't. It was kind of a weird relationship. I mean, we 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 dated. Um, I can't say that he was my boyfriend. I don't know that he would consider me his girlfriend. Um, we just we dated. We did things. I played sports in college. He played basketball. His brother played basketball. Um, it, it, we just, you know, it just didn't work out. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. It was like I went out with the other guys. Um, saw other guys and went on lots of vacations, um, you know. And, and once you guys split, were you guys still friends or kind of, uh, you know, problems? I mean, Is it yeah. friendly, not friendly? No, I don't think it was not friendly. I mean, we were friendly. Um, uh, I know that we went to Hawaii um, at one point. Yeah, I mean, I, you know. And you were saying that... Um, the, it's 2009 d- now. Had you ever met his wife? I may have. Do you know, do you remember her name or anything, or? Um, um, or what she did for a living, or where she worked, or anything uh, about her? The suspect was just asked three consecutive questions relating to the victim. She was supposedly in a reflective state during all three of the questions, yet her facial expression completely changed for the third one. This is because she was pretending to be in a state of reflection for the first two questions, as she already knew the answers, whereas for the third question, she actually was in a state of reflection and was genuinely searching her memory for the correct response. Had you ever met his wife? I may have. Do you know, do you remember her name or anything, or? Um, um. The third question is about to be posed and her focus is about to switch from pretending to be thinking to actually thinking. Or what she did for a living or where she worked or anything uh, about her? Well, I think she, I th- I'm going to say that I think she was a nurse. Um, I mean, I can't even remember how he, he said he met her. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, it's been so long ago. Well, let me ask you: Did you go to their wedding? You know? No, I didn't go to their wedding. Um, no, I don't. Did not go to their wedding. Um, I couldn't even tell you what year he got married. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it's it's been a million years ago. You know, again, I, I mean, what? You know, I don't understand why you're talking about some guy I dated a million years ago. Well, do you know what happened to his wife? Yeah, I know she got killed. You wouldn't need to be an expert in body language to recognize the unmitigated terror emanating from the suspect's face at this moment. She had just verbalized the victim's tragic demise for the first time in most likely over two decades. What, um, did, you, what did you hear about that? I, I saw a poster at work. Um, I'm sure I spoke to him about it. Um, I think I spoke to another friend of his about it. Um, and how did, how did you first learn about that? Jeez. <laughs> Someone could have called me. I could have heard it at work. Um, I think at one point there may have been a flyer or something. I know a good friend of his... Um, Were you on the job back then when that happened? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm sure I was on the job. That's why I would have heard about it with the flyer. Um, he had a good friend, Mike... Mike... Boldrick? Mike... Hmm... Um... Um, you be, know, but being that you're kind of you used to see uh, John, you know, was it everything okay between you guys? I mean, there was never anything uncomfortable or anything between you and her. Um, 
Eight separate witnesses testified that Stephanie had confronted Sherry at the hospital she worked at, while the two of them were reportedly in an intimate relationship with John. The confrontation was said to have been highly aggressive, and Stephanie had to be escorted off the premises by security. Reports stated that Stephanie was by far the more combative, and even made threats against Sherry's life. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's, God, it's been so many years. I mean, uncomfortable. I mean, I, I can't even, I can't even remember if we had a conversation. I mean, we may have, I may have, I may have seen her at his apartment. You know, it, uh, geez, how many years ago is that? I don't even know what year she, you know, got killed. Where was his apartment? Notice her passive disposition as she gives the following truthful response. On Roscoe. Okay. Yeah, Roscoe and um, um, east or west of DeSoto, uh, either east or west of DeSoto. Do you know where he moved after? Did, did he move after he got married, or do you know? Or? Now notice how her disposition switches from passive to frantic as she once again pretends to have a vague memory. Oh, I'm sure he did. Did you know um, where he was living, or somewhere in the valley? Did you ever visit him and his wife? No. No, never no. went out to you know get together dinners. I no, no. Like I said, his sister used to come over. His sister had, had, had come to my place. I knew his, I knew his brother because his brother played basketball at Northridge. Um, in fact, I was just coming across some pictures that I had just scanned, uh, scanned from. Um, I take a lot of photos, uh -huh. um, like ten thousand, and I just did a service where I scanned everything. And uh, after his wife died, did. Did you talk to him again or anything? Yeah, I mean, I did talk to him. Mm -hmm. I talked to him, probably his parents, um, probably some other friends. Um, you know, I'm sure I talked to him. Yeah. Um, but you, you don't, you're not sure where he moved to after he got married. No idea. I mean, never I, went over to, to visit him or. I don't think. I mean, I don't or, think so. I mean, um, I don't know. I don't. I mean, I don't think I did. Um, I mean, I know he lived on Roscoe for a long, long time. Um, After uh, John's wife died, I, you said you may have been talking to him. Did uh, your relationship start up again? I would say no. Um, again, can you give me a year? I mean, this well, is like 2009. She died in 1986. Yeah, I think it was 86. 1986. Okay. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm faintly remembering that um, I went to Hawaii with my friend Greg. Greg and I got certified for scuba diving. Um, and I'm thinking that John met us there, meaning Greg and I. Um, after, he, after he got uh, married or whatever, were you, were you dating anybody? In hmm. particular, with and that was what? Steady. What year? 1986, you said? I think he got married he got yeah, in around 85, 86, something like that. Were you seeing anyone seriously? or? God, I couldn't say. Um, geez, I'm trying to think. I mean, um, you know, I dated a fireman. Randy may have dated a gal that Mike was dating. And, that, and then Mike... Randy broke up with that gal. I couldn't even tell you the gal's name, if I'm even thinking of the story right. And then I started dating Randy. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, you know, so again, I mean, not like I was a huge floozy or anything, but... No. As far as you recall, after John's wife died, did you start a relationship again with, with John, or dating casually, or anything like that? <laughs> like I said, he met Greg and I in Hawaii. Um, you know, uh, what island did we go to? <sighs> I think the big island in Kauai. I mean, when, when you heard about uh, John's wife being killed, I mean, what was your, what was your reaction? I mean, did, you thought you heard about it, what, through a friend or at, at, in a bulletin or Either something? Either a, a friend or a bulletin. Um, I obviously, I mean, I called, I called the family. 
um, I, you know, I called maybe some of his friends that, that, that I knew and I mean obviously it's shock if you're if I heard it at work you know um, which I may have I, I faintly remember a bulletin going around you know um, do, you, do you know what the circumstances were regarding her death mm. geez oh, let me think back um, geez I don't know if it was, you know, if it was a burglary or something. Uh, yeah, it's. I mean, it's been so many years. I, I mean, I can faintly think that I may have saw a flyer. Yeah. Uh, may have had her picture on it. You know, um, I may. That's why I say, if somebody had called me, I may not have known what her last name was. I may have. I mean, maybe if you told me, I would remember it. Um, Do you remember you know, the first name? <sighs> Shelley. Um, Sherry. I don't know something maybe you know um, like I said it's been so many years and um, from all the years as far as you can remember you don't do you, do you remember ever talking to her just well as you say, I said earlier you know I, I mean I may have and I'm and now I'm thinking I put may I may have gone to her and say hey you know what you know what is he dating you he's but he's bothering me um, and so I'm thinking that we had a conversation about that um, one or two maybe I, I, you know I, it could have been three I don't want to say I had three conversations with her oh. like, I, at, I like at her work or at their at their house or no I'm thinking that I'm you know he obviously must have told me where she worked I'm thinking it was a hospital somewhere in LA and I just I mean I could have been again what year was that where was I working um, Ninety two or ninety three, there was a big earthquake. No, when was a big earthquake? April of ninety two, because I was I, I stopped teaching Dare. I think I stopped teaching Dare sometime in ninety two. When you said like, hey, you know, he's calling me, he needs to knock it off or what have you, I mean, was that was that civil? Was there I mean Oh yeah, it, no, there was not I don't think there was anything. It was if the conversation lasted a, a, a few minutes, so I can't even remember. And what is it like? You know, we went out to lunch or anything. Right, but there was but no like arguments or I, fights I or it didn't so. get heated or anything like Not that. Not that I recall. No, I mean, what? I would think that would stand out. I would think. Now again, that's not standing out in my mind. Um, you know. So you didn't have any problems with her then? No. You didn't have any issues with her? No, I mean. But let me <laughs> let me ask you. It seems like you didn't have any issue. Now. Did she have an issue with you as far as oh. because now you, you're telling her, hey, you know, tell him to stop calling. Now she, you know she's like, hey. you know, you figure she'd be threatened oh. by you. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, from what you remember, as far as when you talked to her, maybe you didn't take it as serious, <laughs> but maybe you know, did she? Maybe she was bugging. I mean, like, was she throwing things at me or something? Or well, no, just you know, as far as you're trying to explain, like, hey, have him stop calling me. You know, stop playing games. You know, stop, I, I tell you. It, it, yeah. If the conversation, I couldn't even tell you how long the conversation. If you said, did it last a half an hour? Did it last three minutes? Did it last twenty minutes? I can't even remember. It's been so long ago. So you would have gone. If it was en route to work. You more than likely you would have gone to her work and had this discussion with her. I mean, that's sounding familiar. Uh -huh. I mean, that's now that you guys are bringing this stuff up. Um, I mean, it sound that sounds familiar. Um, but again, I mean, you know. <laughs> Uh, what's I mean? What's this got to do with me dating him and you know her getting killed? I mean, I I don't you know I don't have anything to do with it. And you got something that's somebody said you know whatever. I mean, well, like we said, we we just literally got this the other day, and and you're going through it. Yeah. And you see, and you saw me say, your oh, name. Well, next next door. Right. And, <laughs> and so you know, I mean, obviously, it's like we recognize yeah. the name. And we know that you know you work yeah. next door to us, and so. We're trying to get some background. We're trying to figure this out. I mean, this is from a long time ago. Oh, I know. And you know, and, and, and things have been kind of slow for us. And so, you know, Chief Beck has said, hey, you know, I want you guys working. I don't want you just sitting around reading the paper. Yeah. So he's kind of pushing some older cases out even to the guys that yeah. work active cases because, you know, and so we see this and we're just like, oh, yeah. well, we, you know, we want to talk to you about it. But, of course, the only reason we did it here is because we're getting into some pretty personal stuff no, in I your relationship. It. You know, my, I, my and, husband's yeah. on the job. Yeah. And, and we've and been so married. We don't, you know, we don't want to take the risk. We don't want to take the risk. We're in one of those interview rooms, no, and even with the door closed, it. someone's going to get no. supplies and see us on a monitor, or hears yeah. or whatever. No, I appreciate it. I mean, I you know, appreciate. It. Like I said, that's where people go when there's orals. You know, when they're doing orals, <laughs> yeah. guys will go in there and oh, try I, and watch. And I, what are the answers to the questions? You know, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, so we just we just want to afford you the most privacy and confidentiality we could. No, I appreciate. Like I said, I mean, 
this goes way back and I mean it was very sad you know obviously um, I, I haven't I, you know I when we were in college some of us would go down to his house in San Diego I, I went down to his house with him I made detective I think in 93 93 let me get back uh, to as far as when you said that uh, John was calling you to to see you and during that time you felt that he was felt he was either seeing her or was he engaged or married did, did you know I don't remember I, you know I don't know uh-huh. um, I, uh, Would he ever, well, let's see my okay. husband but uh, during that time that you were seeing John, uh, you know, was he acting kind of, you know, kind of squirrely or kind of sneaking around when he'd hook up with you or anything like that to make you think, hey, you may, yeah, this well, guy he probably is. was. I mean, well, after he hooked up with uh, with Sherry, do you know uh, where they were living? No, you asked me that already, uh -huh. and I said, well, obviously they were living in Van Nuys Division. Yeah, <laughs> um, I may have known. I mean, I, you know, again, I, you know, did he ever give me the address? I, I, maybe, you know, I don't remember. I mean, I don't know. Because the only reason I'm asking you again is because we've been talking. I know some stuff has come to you because you're like, oh, it seems like you, you know, so. I don't think I've ever gone there. That's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't want to say, no, I've never gone there. And then you say, oh, I was at a party. Because I, 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 I don't, you know, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, like I said. We've got these friends, we have different, we have parties. Because I know you, you went to talk to her at, at the hospital uh, regarding this issue with John. To, you know, kind of like, hey, you know, what's going to happen here with this thing? But would this ever have followed up to her house when you went to talk to her to say, hey, you know what? I, I don't even know that I knew where they lived. I, you know, that's what I'm saying. I don't, if I knew where they lived and I'd been there, if it was for something social, I, I would, I'm, I'm, and I can't see how many times I, I saw her face to face. You know, he lived on Roscoe. Did I ever see her there? I don't know. I mean, I may have seen her at his apartment on Roscoe. Mm -hmm. I may have met her there. Um, you know, I, I mean. But you didn't have any issues with her, right? No, I mean, uh, you know, obviously, if he was dating me and dating her, I probably said, hey, pick or something, you know, fair. you know, back That's then. Fair. Um, yeah. I mean, would you remember if she snapped on you and just like, hey, man, it's my man, you know, you get it, leave him alone, you know, blah, 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 that kind of stuff? You know. I mean, would you remember an incident like that? I mean, because that would be like, what? Uh, well, you know, and maybe that happened. I mean, uh, uh, gosh, I, you know, it's been so long ago. I, you know, I just, I mean, that's not ringing a bell. Mm -hmm. Um because the times I've seen you around at our office, I'm crazy. <laughs> you know, but you're always you know. kind of like real. I mean, you seem kind of bubbly. Oh, I'm. Pr I'm. You know, people think I'm really hyper. Um, but I can. I mean, I can get. I can get upset. You know, and and, and then I forget five seconds later. You know, you know how guys razz you and you go, ah. You know. Um, I mean, I've done that in the office. You know, but it's like, and then I'm, you know, and then I'm, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I mean, people Water think, under the bridge. Yeah, I mean, it's like people think I'm crazy, and then they think I'm crazy at home, and I'm, you know, more. I'm, I'm a hyper person at work. I'm, you know, I, I enjoy my job. I get excited. I, you know, um, I, I enjoy the job. I've always enjoyed the job. Oh, and okay. then the guys that lived across from me, um, Jim Jaskell and Roy Sakabu, Sakabu, something like that. Well, one of the concerns I had is looking at some of the notes is uh, some of Sherry's friends said that you and her were having a problem <laughs> because of the John situation. <laughs> well, I, number one, I don't know who her friends are because yeah. um, again, I don't, I don't recall if he did tell me where he met her. I don't know even who these friends are. A problem, like I said, if I spoke to her. I mean, I'll go on as far in as a limb, and I don't even want to say I spoke to her five times because that's probably not even true. I, I, I can't even remember. Um, again, did I meet him at her place when he, you know, he lived on Roscoe for, I think, 
uh, quite a while, but I couldn't tell you how long he lived in Roscoe. And the only reason I remember the place now is because it's like a huge dope dope place now, where they, you know, it, it may have been back then, but you know, maybe we didn't know back then. Um, I could have met her there. I could have, you know, uh, I, you know, I don't even know that I met any of their friends. I, I, you know, I don't, I, I, I can't say that. I don't know that that's a true statement. Well, that's what I'm reading is that you guys have problems with each other and words are being exchanged and it's all relating to John. <laughs> you so. know what? I, 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 I just, I can't say. You can't say? No, I, that, that doesn't even ring a bell. So I mean. I mean, it seemed like, yeah, you would recall something if somebody's I would, going I would off think, on you, right? I would think. I mean, I would think. From what you're telling me is when you guys met at the hospital, uh, I mean, you guys talked, but it wasn't, from what you recall, confrontational so. from either side? No, I, I mean, I'm trying to, you know, turn my memory back, you know, <laughs> and I'm trying, I can't even, I can't even picture the, you know, picture the, the conversation. I mean, I can't even picture the conversation. Well, let me ask you, I mean, at the hospital, it never got to the point where people are going, hey, hey, you know, go to everybody go to your own corner type of thing? I don't think so. Nothing like that? I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, I really don't. I mean, if you, if, you know, if you say people said that, that's not ringing a bell to me at all. I mean, it's not. I yeah. mean, that that's not ringing a bell was to ever, me at all. Was there ever a time when you and Sherry were talking and John had to maybe go, like, hey, you guys relax, you know, or anything like that? think so. about, you know, ever going to a house and having a dispute like that? You know, I'm just, if I met her ever at his apartment, <clears throat> maybe, I mean, maybe we could have met, it, I could have met at her apartment. I'm thinking that the hospital thing, that sounds familiar, that I, I met her there. I just can't say that I've ever, again, was I there with other people? I don't. I. I. It, I don't know. Um, I don't think I ever met her there or him there. Um, meaning one or the other. I don't think so. Well, I guess basically what I'm asking is, you know, were you ever welcome to the house? Like, you know, hey. Oh, come over. Yeah, come on over. I'm in a barbecue. You know, a dinner party, Christmas party, whatever. You know, I don't know. You know don't. I'm just trying to think. You know, like I said because there were so many of us that I have 10,000 pictures okay I'm a picture nut mm -hmm. let me ask when you were seeing John would you uh, I take it he would pick you up in his car you go in her you know your car things of that nature when you guys would go out well, yeah I mean do you remember what he what he drove well I know at one time he drove either a 240 or 260z <laughs> Any other cars that stand out in your mind? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know how long you drove that 240 or 260Z for. Right. Um, and the only reason I say that is because I think I may have a picture of it um, with him in it. Um, what kind of car did you have back then? Let's see. What year? <laughs> or are you like one of those young cops that's like, oh, I got a paycheck and bought a new car? Oh, no, no, no. I've only had like a few cars in my whole life. So what did you have when you came on the job? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, my first car was a 68 Chevelle. Well, like I said, as we were looking at the case, and, you know, we had read the notes as far as from uh, Sherry's friend saying you, you guys had problems or words. And they got heated. You know, and the reason we're asking you is they had mentioned that an incident at her work had occurred, and uh, they've also told us that an incident at her house occurred. You know what? And this is at her house <laughs> during the period of time that they're married. <laughs> That's just not sounding familiar at all. No. I mean, I, you know what? I. That's just not sound. I, 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 again, if someone says that I was at her house. And I had an incident with her. I, I, you know, I, that just doesn't sound. I, 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 you know, was John there? Did John say this happened because, and other people were there? I, I just, I don't recall. I mean, it just doesn't sound, you know, familiar. And this is an incident where you showed up. You weren't supposed to show up, and 
things got heated. At his house? Yeah. <laughs> that I, you know, I, that just doesn't sound familiar. I mean, no. I, you know, it's not sounding familiar. So not at all. Now you're saying not familiar because it's just something well, you remember, or well, it's just you know what? I would have then I'd have to say I don't remember because I don't remember. I it, that doesn't sound familiar. I. I mean, would you, you remember know, something like that in your life? If well, I would think, some but sort of drama involving you know, the other woman type of thing. Well, sure. Did you ever uh, fight with her? You mean like we fought? Yeah. Did you ever yeah. duke it out with her? No, I don't think so. I mean, you'd remember that, right? That would be pretty. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, specific. Th- you know, yeah, like I said, I mean, dramatic. obviously, uh, I, you know, I mean, it just doesn't sound familiar. I mean, I mean, what are they saying? So I, I, I fought with her. So, so now, I mean, I, 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 I I'm get, getting the jump, of the leap. Excuse me, I haven't eaten. Um, they're saying, okay, I fought with her, so I must have killed her. This is known in psychology as reductio ad absurdum, or appeal to extremes. It's a form of argument that attempts to disprove a statement by showing that it leads to an absurd or impractical conclusion. I mean, come on. I mean, that's, you know, I, I don't even know who these people are. I, I can't even say I met any of these people. I mean, that's, it's insane. Would it be something you would remember? I mean, because it's, I don't know if any other intense incidents in your life that have occurred, I mean, you'd recall those, right? I mean. Well, like a use of force at work or car crash, something you're involved in, you'd be like, yeah, I you would think I would remember. I mean, I would think if it was something that crazy. I mean, I, I can't say you say how many fights have you gotten into, you know, yeah. in your life. You know, I mean, a few at work. Well, fights um, at work are kind of you know, different because we've all had uses of force or whatever. But well, I, mean, I haven't it, even had even a lot of those. I right, mean, but you know, if you're if you're actually, you know. I mean, I played like if if Dan and I got mad at each other and we threw blows in the squad room. I mean, twenty years later, I, I would remember it. I mean, I would think would I would remember it. But unique. that's that's what I'm saying. That's not sounding familiar to me, at all. I'm looking at the notes and these people are kind of. I mean, they're pointing the finger at you. Well, and I mean, that's not ringing a bell to me. So, uh-huh. you know, I don't know. You know, it's. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, that just sounds crazy to me. Yeah. So you, offhand, you don't recall ever going into her house and having words and physically, you know, no, attacking I mean, her, her attacking you. No. Nothing like that. No. I mean, that's no. Nothing. No. No. Not at all. Okay. Well, on some of the, uh, on this case, you know, this is it occurred in '86, right? Uh, detectives processed the scene, things of that nature. Uh, they did fingerprints and all that stuff. You know, the, well, you know the standard mm-hmm. stuff. I mean, you've been doing this longer than I have. Uh, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I got 26 years on, yeah. going on 26. 19, so. <laughs> but, you know, as they processed everything, uh, they did the best they could at that time, and they looked at a lot of, a lot of people and different things in this case. And you're right. I mean, if you guys are claiming that I'm a suspect, then... You know, I, I got a problem with, you know, with that. Okay. Okay? So, you know, if you're, if you're doing this as an interrogation, you're saying, hey, I'm a suspect. Well, I, now I got a problem with, you know, now you're accusing me of this? Is that what you're, is that what you're saying? We're trying to figure out what happened, Stephanie. Uh, well, I'm, I was, you know, I'm just saying, uh, th- you know, do I need to get a lawyer if you're uh, accusing me of I this? Mean, you know, you don't have to. I mean, you know, I'm just you're here of your own free will. I mean, no, you know, well, I know, but I mean, I mean you know you're, not, you're not under arrest. You can walk out. You can leave you whenever you like. Well, but you know, I, I'm trying <coughs> to give you some background of you know how I knew him, and now you're telling me that some somebody's saying that we had this big old fight, and I don't even know what you're talking about. Um, you know, and I don't want to you know get in trouble for something that I didn't even do, or you're saying I did something. Okay, yeah, we understand. I mean, how would you guys like it if the tables were turned on you? I understand. No, um, no, that's what we're telling you. I mean, you're free to go whenever you want. If if this makes you uncomfortable and you want to, well, you now you're starting leave. to make me uncomfortable. The thing is, I mean, detectives did what they could at that time on the crime scene. Okay, and the burglary thing you're talking about—that is an angle that they looked at. I go, but now we're looking at everything else on the case because nobody was ever arrested <laughs> on the case. I, I don't know that, or not. Okay. Now what we'd like to do is. Obviously, you know about all the DNA stuff and things of the nature that, you know, 
gets done on cases nowadays. You know, if we asked you for a, a DNA swab, would you be willing to give us one? Maybe. Because <laughs> now, 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 yeah, because now, now I'm thinking I probably need to talk to a lawyer. Okay. I mean, because well, I, I know how this stuff works, okay? Don't get me wrong. You're right. I have been doing this a long time. Yeah. And, and I wish I had been recording this because, because now it sounds like, you know, there's... You know, you're selling these people, say I'm a fighting with her, and now <sighs> it sounds like you're trying to, you know, I've been doing this a long time. Yeah, we know. Okay, and it, and now it almost sounds like you're trying to pin something on me. No, now I, I got that sense. Well, what it gets to on these on these cases, and you know it as well as I do, our job is to identify and eliminate suspects. I can't believe this. So if we ask you to the point to give us a DNA sample, a buccal swab, so we can identify or eliminate you, would you be willing to do that? Maybe. Because I know this, I, 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 I well, that's where we're at too. I mean, because right now, from looking at the evidence, it's you know it's possible we may have some DNA at the location. That's great. And we're going to do what we can to try to put this thing together. And your name's in the book. These people are pointing at you for whatever reason. <laughs> I don't know why. And that's just crazy. I mean, that's just that's absolutely crazy. And. It would be irresponsible on our part not to look at it. I know. You guys have to do your job, and, and I guess I'm going to have to contact somebody. So That's fair. I mean, because I, I know how this stuff works. Sure. I mean, I, 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 I just can't believe it. That's I, I mean, we, we understand that. I mean, if we were in your position, I mean, we would feel the same way. I, I just can't even believe it. I mean, it's just, I, I mean, I'm shocked. I'm really shocked. That somebody would be blame saying that I did this. I mean, we had a fight, and so I went and killed her. I mean, come on. Well, that's okay. All right. Well, thanks for giving me the courtesy. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. All right, Stephanie, take care. All right. Crazy. Let's see, This is insane. Okay. Give me one sec. Okay. Stephanie, you know you have the right to remain silent. Do you understand? Yes. Anything you say may be used against you in court. Do you understand? Yes. You have the right to the presence of an attorney before and during any questioning. Do you understand? Yes. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you free of charge before any questioning if you want. Do you understand? Yes. Do you want to talk to us right now? No. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. This then. is crazy. Okay. This is absolutely... I'm like, I'm like in shock. I'm totally in shock. We are back on the record in People versus. Lazarus. Shortly before noon, the uh, jury announced they have a verdict. We will take the verdict at this time. People of the state of California versus Stephanie Eileen Lazarus. Case number BA 357423. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Stephanie Eileen Lazarus, guilty of the crime of murder of Sherry Rasmussen in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony as charged in count one of the information. We further find the murder was of the first degree. Your Honor, I'm John Rutten. Thank you for the opportunity to speak during this hearing. Um, there are really no words that can describe the loss of Sherry and the whole of, the, of this experience, so it makes no sense to talk very long. It suffices to say that the Rasmussen family my family and Stephanie's family have been thrust into a bizarre world of disbelief and indescribable sadness. Sherry Rasmussen had a profound impact on so many people. And I was proud that she agreed to be my wife. It was impossible not to notice Sherry when she entered a room. To me, her physical presence was startling. I can clearly remember the first moment I laid eyes on her. Sherry Rasmussen was a physical presence and my heart still races when I look at pictures of her. 
But Sherry was extraordinary, more for who she was than the way she looked. She was a hard worker, a consummate professional, a leader, a diplomat, forgiving, tough, and a kid at heart. Cherry's loss, the way she died, and the trial 25 years after her death has had a profound impact on many, many others. The effects are broad and span a generation, creating pain for those whose lives should have never been touched by this tragic event. Again, words are feeble tools for describing these impacts, but there are so many moments and so very many tears, and the fact that Sherry's death occurred because she met and married me brings me to my knees. Stephanie Lazarus was sentenced to 27 years to life for the murder of Sherry Rasmussen. She is currently being held inside the maximum security unit of the Central California Women's Facility. Any other cars that stand out in your mind? Hmm. <laughs> mm. Fuck this.